photographers are also, you know, comedians. You know. <laughs> so, um, basically, what I'm going to do tonight is, is I'm going to just kind of walk, just, just go through as if I were photographing this stuff. And then, if you guys have questions along the way, don't wait till the end. Just ask them as I'm going. Um, and just kind of have a discussion back and forth, because that's kind of how you learn by by actually discussing it rather than just being dictated to. And then you go home and think, oh gosh, what happened? You know, I did, what did I do? You know, I, what did you do? How did you do that? Um, I purchased just standard lights like you would get off the shelf. Now, these came from uh, Harbor Freight. They were about $36, I think, for the pair. I only really wanted one, but they, it, it's hard to find lights that come with just one, so I had to buy two pair for the other, that one over there. But I'm just going to use one for this. Uh, I'm using a light, and I'm using a reflector card. Um, the reflector card, and I'm using this foam board, but I mean you could use a the backside of a mat board. You could use um, it, sometimes I, I use corrugated plastic because they're nice and durable. With this, you have to make sure that if you're photographing anything that's that's really reflective, it could see the corrugation in here. So you can't use it on something that's really reflective. Um, but I mean, the foam board or the mat board, or, you know, you can get it at any frame shop, or you can get it at uh, Hobby Lobby or, or wherever. The background that I'm using is a purchase background. It's a gradated background because it makes life a whole lot easier. Um, it makes you seem like a professional because you don't have to try to get the gradation with the lighting. Um, and I think this, I don't know if these are like $75 or something, but if you want to and you can get it, if you could get it cheaper, you could also, in Photoshop, um, you could create a gradated background or a gradation file and then you could have that printed by Kinko's or White Rabbit or someone like that as well on a matte paper. Um, and I do mention Photoshop because that is a tool, one of the tools that is kind of required if you're going to do photography. Um, like anything else, if you're doing your taxes, you need the right, your own taxes. Instead of using an accountant, you need the right tools to do it with. And if you're doing you know, your craft, whether it be painting or pottery or whatever, you need the right tools. So if you're choosing to photograph your own artwork, then you do need your some of the correct tools. Now, some things you can you can cheat on. You don't have to get you know a hundred fifty dollar a piece of lights, um, and you don't have to get expensive soft boxes. Uh, but you do Photoshop is one that you really do need, and it's nine ninety nine a month. Uh, you get a, a month free. I think you pay for it yearly, um, but it is an, an important tool. What I'm using for my soft box or my diffusion is a material that comes from Joanne Fabric. Um, usually I put this on, a, I build, a, I go to I buy a PVC frame. Um, my PVC frame kind of got lost at some point in one of my moves. And so the last workshop I did, I grabbed an extra stretcher bar that I had. So if you're a painter and you have stretcher bars, then you probably have these in your, um, in your shop anyway. So it's just a stretcher bar that I stapled this material to. And um, so that instead of a, a soft box or anything, you just simply use the material. What kind of fabric? It's a, it's a, it's a tool of some sort, but I can't remember exactly what, what type. You just want it to be so it doesn't have a, a, a texture to it. It should be opaque. Right? Like yeah. a chiffon yeah. tool. Yeah. Maybe um, not opaque, but well, it's got to be transparent. some some, some, trans some translucent, but but you want it to be white, not clear, you know, and you want it to be kind of a neutral color. Could they use poster board and just tape it to something sturdy in place of the matte border? Well, the only thing with that is not giving you your gradation. No, no, I'm talking about the reflector. Oh, the side reflector. Yeah, I said you could use the like matte board, the back side of matte board. Yeah, I know, but poster board is thirty five cents or something. Like oh. That. <laughs> yeah, you can use poster board. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think of it's yeah. not sturdy enough, but if it's taped to something else, then it would work. Yeah. So you can see without the whiteboard. Yes. 
with the whiteboard. So you can really see the difference there. Mm -hmm. that makes. Mm -hmm. I said, if you can't see it, then you're welcome to get up and, and move around. And then, if you're using these types of lights, then you, rather than using auto white balance on your camera, go ahead and set it to tungsten, because these are tungsten lights, because they're, they're halogen lights. And a lot of people will be buying like LED lights, and LED really isn't a good light to use for photographs. Okay. It's better to use, to use tungsten. Do you want them from the side or like from up above? I like them from the side, but you know, that's just a, you know, it, it, it depends on the piece. But for, for most of the time, I'm just trying to make it as simple as I can. You know, this is kind of a beginning class, so. You know, sometimes I might hang them from from top, but most of the time um, I am I am usually working from from side. In fact, I'm going to move a little bit more to the side on this, I think. What are the lights that you have your hands on? What are they normally used for? I'm not familiar with them. Painting. They're shop lights. They're shop lights. Yeah. Go into Lowe's or someplace like that. Yeah. What, what are they called again? You can get them at Lowe's and they're called what? Shop lights. Shop lights. Yeah. They're halogen shop lights. Okay. Like I said, these came from Harbor uh, Freight. They're cheap. These came from Harbor Freight. Where, where is that? Second Street. Third Street. Third Street. Yes. Oh. That's the railroad tracks on the way to. The West Side. Kind of across from Ken Nunn's office. Oh. Yeah. Right before you get to the McDonald's. Yeah. I think the Culver's. I've used a tall uh, floor lamp. Yeah, the Culver's. Yeah, passive pop, yeah. Why'd you say? I've used a tall floor lamp before, like with the three light bulbs. Yeah. And so if you angle your bulbs, you can kind of sometimes get that same effect. Yeah, I, just, I really like the, the cleanness of, of the halogen lights. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I kind of picked those. But, um, and they're, they're close to the, to the light that I would actually, you know, the photographic lights. And then you just kind of want to fill the frame kind of nicely. And I'm getting a little bit of bleed through on the light, so I'm going to move the light a little closer. How could you tell you had bleed through? Where was the show? On the back of the camera. I'll show you a little. Yeah. It I goes off. I don't know what you mean. Well, you can see the lines here a little bit. The lines of the... On the background. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Threshold. And you always use a tripod. Always use a tripod because you're going to have a long exposure. I said put it on tungsten because it's a tungsten balance light. Okay. So, so it, it automatically, you know. It, Is that warm? It's warm, yeah. It's about 3200 Kelvin.
So kind of here's kind of what we've got here. And I've got to, I got to remember that you're here. I think I skipped you last time. And you know, you'll notice that, um, like this here, there is there are some highlights on the on the pie, but there's there's a difference between glare and highlights. And for a pot that's shiny like this, you really do also need to show some highlights so that people know it's a shiny surface. Because if you didn't have any, then it could be any type of surface, you have a dull surface or whatever. So don't don't confuse, you know, there, glare would be, you know, if this was moved around, in front, where you're looking straight into it. But, but with the highlights, Placing the highlights where we want them. To oh, have the, it. We actually want to see what it looks like. Sorry. Yeah. So the glare is what? Now? Basically, just like dead down the middle glare, you know, right in the middle. Yeah. You can see the light bouncing off. Yeah, yeah. So you can see you if you see yeah. the right light, you get to see what. So if you if you move around here to the side. Uh, then you're going to use the light to give the pot shape. It's like you're moving the meridian. If you think about Cause, cause you're basically, you basically you're wanting to give it shape by by having it brighter over here and going a little darker mm -hmm. over there. So that gives it shape. And then with this, you're, sorry. you're giving it kind of a highlight right across the handle here. Any questions? Yeah. Um, how do you have your camera set? You said it's a long exposure. Well, it's whatever the exposure is going to be. I mean, how do, but your meter is going to tell you what the exposure is. So you need to do a. How do you know what? Uh, and you use a meter, and then you're going to adjust. Another your meter in your camera. Oh. Okay. So you have it on manual. Yeah. So it's going to. Um, you know, like I'm shooting at. An aperture of, of 5.6. Is, is that No, you can do whatever. Whatever the exposure is, um, you're gonna you're gonna the shutter speed and the and the you, you get the correct exposure, which in this case is is. So if you turn six, it to manual, it'll automatically do that. It'll yeah. automatically. Tell you where to set it at. I mean, you'll 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 set it. You'll set the shutter speed and you'll set the aperture separately. So you've done that already. Yeah. Okay. You know, if and if if you if you shoot one and it's way too bright, then you know that you need to either make the shutter the shutter speed less, uh -huh. or you need to make the aperture smaller. The aperture. Actually, smaller. Yeah. yeah. Do you have recommendations about that, or is it always different? It's it's always different. I um, I guess I shoot as as little depth of field as I can get by with, but keeping the whole pot in focus, or as much of the pot you want in focus. And that's a preference thing. Do you want the pot all in focus, or do you want some of it to drop out of in focus? To and how do you get that on the camera? By adjusting the the aperture. Because the, the, so the smaller the a, the smaller the aperture, the more depth of field you're going to have. Okay. But the smaller your aperture, the longer your shutter speed has to be. In conjunction with that. And don't forget to kick the tripod right where you're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on this? You know, um, it doesn't have to be, uh, what I would suggest, I mean, you do need something with manual, um, 
exposure. Like the old 35 millimeter. Doesn't have to be an old 35 millimeter. Yeah. And, and it'd be nice if you had something with 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 uh, interchangeable lenses. But you could get by with something like this as well, just with manual exposure. And for what you're doing, I mean, you could go to to a camera shop into the, the used equipment like Roberts and get a fairly old camera, fairly inexpensive, <laughs> that is still going to be, any any camera you get is going to be better than your phone is as far as megapixels. Well, I have a phone shoot that I can change the brightness back. Manually know. though? I mean, uh, well, you kind of want to be able to adjust shutter speed and no, this one, Not I don't sure. know what it's doing, Same. but it allows me to go to a brightness or, or a dull. Yeah, there, there is a hidden menu for photographing on your iPhones that will allow you to manually change most everything. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're still not going to get the, the longer lenses, and you're not going to get the, no. the, the resolution that yeah, I did. Yeah. Does, does everybody understand about pixels? No. More or less. Why don't you say it? <laughs> I know that's not the focus. So, um, that means I'm neutral. I don't know. <laughs> so, basically, the, 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 more, the higher your resolution of the camera, the more megapixels you have, the smaller the megapixels are, uh, and, the, and there's more of them in there. So, more megapixels, better quality. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's the know, resolution. It's like 1024 by something on. You know, I don't even work with 1024 by something on. I work with with a, a, a dimension of inches and how many pixels per inch. So I work with like 16 by 20 by 300 mega pixels per inch. Okay. Because I mean that's just I. Say that again, 16 by 20 or what? But, well, I, I just threw that out of my ass. So don't, I mean, you don't have to write that down. But, okay. Um, About 300 megapixels. But, but you, you want something that's at least 8 by 10 at 300 megapixels. And I don't know how many pixels that is, you know, the pixel dimension, because I just don't work that way. you said 300 megapixels, is that like 300 dpi? Three, no, I, I, 300 pixels per inch. Is that like 300 dpi? Yeah, the dots per inch are imprinting, the pixels per inch is in photography. When you, if you have a manual camera, or when you take your image into Photoshop, as Kendall said, you need Photoshop, you will see what the megapixels are. Or you, you'll see if you're at 300 or less if you're in your Photoshop. So explore right away. So you need the full Photoshop because I have elements. Elements is probably fine. Because that's all I'm going to use it for. Yeah. Taking pictures of me. Yeah. If you've got elements, that's probably fine. You just view your image. And you see some elements can compare in price. It's cheaper. Um, you just truly isn't rich. I, because uh, really all you need something is to be able to, to adjust levels or exposure mm -hmm. and be able to crop and yeah. resize yeah. and adjust color. And so that's the three main things that you need to do. And everything else. Exactly. But and, and if you can do something to to clone out or, or to get rid of dust spots and things like that, then that's good too. I guess yeah, four things. I think I can cheat with it a lot. Yeah. But if you're submitting to an art show, it has to be straight camera work. You can't go in and yeah. fool with the image. Yes, you can. Not really. They're used to art shows, and you're looking at really old instructions. Well, that's what we're still getting, unfortunately. Well, because used to, it would say that, the, that your image could not be, could not, you could not use Photoshop on your image. Well, it doesn't well, say that. Okay, because Photoshop is the dark room now, so you, every image that's ever shot should be going through Photoshop. So basically, you eyeball to see if it matches but, pretty close to. But you, but I mean, if you've got a speck on your background, if you hire a professional to photograph your work, they would be cleaning things up. Huh. So, and it still goes to our shows. No, they would. They say we can tell when you. 
then get better. <laughs> Any other questions on this piece? I'm going to yeah, put, put this piece next, I think. This is from our high school, Bloomington uh, High School South. Wow, nice job. get photographed the same way. You have a good light set up and it pretty much works for everything. You have a bad light set up and it works for everything. One thing nice about using a constant light is you see is you see them in person. Or if you're using a strobe light or a flash, you know you're only seeing it when the flash goes off. That's that's why I I teach and I use lights that are constant, so you can what you see is what you get. You know, versus a strobe light. But any questions? What did I do to make this one so bright? What did you do? Any in here? Um, you probably didn't have, a, judging from that shadow, you didn't have any diffusion. It's direct light. Zero diffusion. Okay. That, that would be the of it. It's called outside on a cloudy day. You do not want to do that either. <laughs> the color balance is never the same. Yeah. yeah so so if, if you photograph something today and you photograph something 15 minutes later today, it's, it's going to be different. And so you're, you're if you have if you have five slides uh, or five images for a jury, even if you shot them all at the same time, they're probably not going to look the same because the light's changing all the time. And you know, and they're going to be blue. You know, they have a lot of trouble getting the blue out. So 
that's why, I mean, I like as much control as possible. That lens of mine won't focus as close as I want to focus, so I just put on a different lens. Uh, a lot, you know, that's, that's why it's good to have an interchangeable lenses. Most cameras that have built-in lenses have close focus built in. C 
So I take the same material, I cut a hole in the middle of it, put over the lens. Then just take a one of those clips. I this I didn't have. I usually just use one of those like metal clips, like you put papers together mm -hmm. stuff with. But I didn't find one, so I grabbed this. But just any type of, and then just pull it tight around your lens, and then clip it. This is just to keep it from falling off. So it's not as important with this piece of jewelry, but a lot of times jewelry will be pretty high reflected. And so this, by building a light tent, you don't see all of the, um, the everything around it. And it also automatically gives you this gradation of light from one side to another. You're basically scaling down your light box. Yeah, and and and, and um, it's, it's becoming a reflector, and the uh, and the and the main light. But, and, but instead of a gray background, you're going to have a white one. No, instead of a gray background, I'm going to have this actually. But you're oh, but, you're you're focusing in there tightly. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. You're not really seeing the shape. It's it's the um, necklace and not the head even. still caught the neck of the collarbone. Yeah. And you could use use this for other things, but it's it's, it's harder for larger larger items like pottery. It's just really hard to control buckers and this. So that's why for larger space, I like having the same type of cloth. Yeah. Any questions? Would cheesecloth work, or is that too? No, cheese, cheesecloth is, is too, too uh, loosely woven. Yeah, too loosely okay. woven. Yeah, but I mean, if you, if you feel this material. Right, right. Yeah, you were saying it was a, a type of a tool. Yeah, it's kind of a satiny yeah, tool, almost like a nylon. Yeah, thin nylon. Check out. Okay, pass this around. Again. Uh, I'd be afraid of that, but it would actually have a. Um, you want it to be. I, I'd be afraid that wouldn't be neutral. Uh, you want it to be shiny. Right? It doesn't have to be shiny, but it works. That's just, I've used that for 35 years. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to go on to 2D art. Questions I can answer while I'm while I'm working. That's fine. Well, I have a question. Okay. Some of my I have I'm always filled with questions. So, uh, some of my glass is like a, a disc in a wrought iron frame, so it's 2D. It doesn't have the dimensionality. No, it's 3D. Well, it's really not that thick. It's just like a flat disc images on it. Okay, but if it's anything other than flat, then it's 3D. So it's so you're it's but you hang it on the wall. You can. Okay. Um, so some are hanging on the wall, some are flat, but they're put into a stand that's not flat. Okay. So like a wrought iron stand, but the piece itself is flat. Okay. So does that go in the flat category? Put it wherever you want to, the, the, wherever it photographs the best. Okay. I would say, I would say that that if it if it's got something where you're seeing the shadows, mm -hmm. then you can put it in the flat category, but only use one light instead of two because you don't want double shadows. You don't want yeah. cross shadows. So, if you, had so you still might want to use the diffusion material. Mm -hmm. So you might set it up like we are this, with the diffusion and a reflector card. But still do it flat, you know, mm -hmm. on an ESA. So if you had a wall hanging too. Yeah, and you can hang it on a wall too. I mean, you, anything you can put I, it, I you can prop it on a chair if you had to. Fabric, um, there is some 3D cloth, uh -huh. so that would be yeah. it's the same thing. There is some 3D cloth. If if it's something that casts shadows, then you probably want to use one light instead of two. Okay. So you don't get double shadows. Can I back you up just a minute? Yeah. The, the lighting that you said you were using was 30 to 100 Kelvin. Yeah. Do those lights adjust to different Kelvin, or no. did you buy them that way? That's just approximately what they are. They're, those are just, it's just, because I it's, have, it's just I have one of those things from Harbor Freight. It seems to me it's a lot colder. Well, is it is it halogen, or is it LED? I think it's LED. Then that's why. So I shouldn't use LED? I, I, I don't have good luck with LED in photography. I have one halogen light, but it gets even really even hot. LED that are supposed to be photographer mm -hmm. lights. Right. I just don't have good luck with them. Okay. So I never use them. I probably should sell them or give them away. I'm not gonna. You know. I feel if I'm doing that, then I'm just causing someone else problems. So I'm just keeping them. Use them when I paint my house. <laughs> Where it doesn't matter what the quality of what is. Oh. Like I said, if you can find a single light on a stand, then that would be fine. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't. I would have rather had it. So normally if I were to do a photograph in a painting, I would take it out of the frame. Or I would, fr or I would photograph it before it goes into a frame. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not going to ask Henry to take this out of the frame. Uh, why would you not include the frame? Because well, number if, number one, if you're photographing it for a jury, they really don't want to see the frame. They want to see the work. Mm -hmm. And then number two, for the frame, you're you're going to get shadow on the, right. the two sides of the Even frame. Even if you use a mat on the top, like a watercolor, that mat will cast 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're just kind of get these lights equal at the same angle. Um, if you want to measure, you can. I don't. And if you want to, you can take something like an ink pen. Remember your ink pen? And you can put up, and you can kind of see if the shadow looks about equal. I do. I would normally touch it, but I won't touch it. It is a little distracting to have that glare on the um, inner gold frame. We're not going to. We're cropping that out. Remember, I said that we normally would. I normally wouldn't photograph it in the frame. Okay. But so you we're can photograph in the frame and crop it off. And right? crop it off, which is what we're going to do. <coughs> it's okay if you shoot a painting that is not framed. You can shoot it off the frame. In other words, you can shoot it wider, right, and then crop, then it, crop it later. Yeah. yeah. And then basically, what you need to do now, you're not using the diffuse, the soft box. No, I'm not. Then you basically want to make sure that whatever you know. If I was shooting this on the wall where the wall was level, then I would come back here and I would level up my my lens. This is, this is going to be at an angle. My lens needs to be at the same angle, so it needs to be right. parallel. I just want to get to the center. And now in a Photoshop, you can cheat a little bit too because you can square that up some but you want to get as close as possible. Are you adjusting the aperture and the Yes, I mean I, I'm, I'm basically I'm, I'm seeing what the exposure is. I think it's his. And but I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, I could make that a little bit darker. So you're doing that by how? I'm not sure. But by adjusting the shutter speed or the aperture. Yes, sir. You don't, and you don't have to have a whole lot of depth of field because it's pretty flat. It just looks cold. Again, we'll crop that frame out. Or is it the light that makes it warm? Actually, what, it, what we're seeing here mainly is your eyes are adjusting to that 3200. Uh -huh. And then you're looking at the back of this and it's looking a little bit blue. Is yeah. that the way the painting is warm? Well, uh, you'll do the final adjustments in, in Photoshop. Photoshop. Okay. But, but it's closer than, than if I turn those lights out. Well, we set that one, but it's closer to looks warmer now, doesn't it? This one looks warmer, yes. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. your eyes are adjusting to those mm -hmm. and then seeing it on the back of the camera, which mm -hmm. is a cooler. Questions? I have a quick one. How do you match the angle of your lens to the angle of the? Well, piece? there's a grid in most cameras. 
And so then you can just look at the grid. See, I mainly use my iPad. You can even throw up a grid, I think, on the There's a grid if you're like directly over it on a table, but when you got it hanging on the wall, there's there's the X and Y, but there's not the Z, so you always get I always feel you get some sort of tilt that you have to fix and post. But I mean, never you found just use the outside frame says, on your iPad as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you just use the outside frame. And well, yeah, the, but I almost wish there was some sort of app that says, okay, you're even on the X, Y, and Z, yeah. so you're perfect. And I know it's because they have a tripod, more than likely. That yeah, I mean, I would, it. It, it, a tripod is pretty important. Mm -hmm. Which so is a camera. But mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're getting by with your iPad, then, you know. I, I, I'm getting better, but it's taken me years to kind of get over it, this if, problem. If, yeah. if, if you're really wanting to take everything up to the next level, mm -hmm. then get a camera that you can't make phone calls with or text with. <laughs> okay. Is there True. A brand camera that you no, recommend? No, it doesn't matter. That's a digital camera, right? You're not using film. Correct. Okay. We haven't used film. I haven't used film since I know. 2000. Just <laughs> 2001, maybe. That long, huh? The shooting that I do is almost always art objects to put on a website or put online. And in both of those settings, there are editing possibilities. We, can, we call it editing. Is that the same function as Photoshop? I've never touched Photoshop. Okay. You can change the crop and, and the angle and all of that. Can, can, yeah, I mean, can you change the the exposure and the yeah. color balance? Yeah. And what 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 are you using? What am I using? What what program are you using? It's what's built into the phone. To the phone. To the phone. The phone yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a. A version. A version. I, I mean, I can't, I, can't, I can't say with any. I can't. I can't say it's a version of Photoshop, but I can say it's something that does a few things that Photoshop does. Okay. Um, it, it gives you a lot. More it may not do it very well, but it does it. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do better. Um, you know, and, and but. Getting away from the phone and using a real camera would really change the dynamics of the images a lot. More dimensions, yeah. Totally. Just giving more, you know, more flexibility, more options, better quality. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, if, and if I guess if you're happy with the quality you're getting, then you wouldn't be here in a way. Well, I, I've but, long realized that there are levels but, far beyond what I'm doing, and I'd like to move up. So. But the, I think the moving up starts with a camera. Okay. And that's the first step. Any other questions? Do all halogen lamps get hot? Like those yeah, that's lights? why they call them hot lights. <laughs> okay. Because I have one halogen, and it, you can't touch it after a little bit. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you don't want to touch it. <laughs> and these. These come with a, a wire protector thingy. Yes. Um, you should take those off. Right. I mean, I don't want to like you know yeah. raise a flag for OSHA or anything. But, right. Right. Because um, they don't destroy part of the wire. I would probably most it, 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 the halogen lights that I use don't have any glass over the front end either. Uh -huh. But halogen lights are known to explode sometimes. Right. And that's why the glass is there. <clears throat> so you don't want to be standing in front of it all the time right. and have it explode. Mm -hmm. Now I've been in business since, uh, I've been in shooting photographs since about 1983, 84. And I've only had one light to explode in that time. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. It? It's just, Using it in the studio, just like this. And it just decided, and it just decided to go. Just Most like of the time, it will go right when you turn it on, which is how this one did. But that it can go anytime. They're just little pieces of glass with a filament and some gas inside. Any other questions? Did is there? Did you get out of it? This what you wanted to get out of it, or are you walking away saying? Why well, I sure didn't get Well, no, I, now I know why I don't get good pictures when they enter a jury show. I'm just not happy with the paintings or the photographs. 
So I need to get a better camera. I mean, you've got you've got options. You can either invest in the equipment to do it yourself and do a really good job, or you hire a professional to do it. And in the long run, you're going to save money if you learn how to do it and you get the proper That's equipment. What I Unless, unless you just say, you know what, I'm going to spend more time making my art and not photographing my art and let someone else do it. But that, that's, you know, that's a choice that each individual has to make. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to photograph watercolors that are under glass and also paintings that are done on acrylic surfaces or reflective surfaces. The reflective, I mean, the reflective surfaces, um, are you getting the reflection of your camera in it? or I just I'm seeing myself in it. Okay. I mean, one, one way to do that, if, if I just absolutely cannot take the glass off of something, a painting or something I'm photographing, which is very rare, then I just put on a really long lens and I get back as far as I can to zoom in on it and I, I cover everything I can with black velvet and then I shoot with a very narrow depth of field so I'll shoot at f4 or something. You know, so that so that way any glare any reflection you're getting will be so out of focus that you don't see it what do you cover with black just the tripod and anything here and any, you know anything around it that would cause that would cause a reflection. A really long lens. A really long lens. And a shallow depth of field. Yeah. Yeah. Or or you could um, you know use a cable release and step over out of the way, or you could set your timer and you could run out of the way and let it shoot. Yeah, that sounds good. Or a remote shutter. Yeah. I have that for my iPad, so I can sometimes get stand out of it once I've narrowed it, and I can stand out and hit the remote. Yeah, even you know, even an iPhone now the newer ones I don't think do, but the ones that you would that had your headphones that you plugged in, when you had your cameras on, your volume control on your headphones was yes. a cable release. Yeah, you could hold like but, a camera. But the new ones with the like the flat things that don't have headphones anymore, you can't do that. But your older ones that had the the eighth inch round plug, mm -hmm. your your volume was, was a cable release. For the camera. That was one of those hidden secrets. They do. Yes. They have clamps on. But but still, I was thinking he had one on that, but it, that's not as a camera. So, but they basically it's it's a, a spring-loaded type box that that clamps clamps it in like this, and then has a has a screw at the bottom of it. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, there's one right there. I knew I saw one yeah, earlier. I was just thinking about walking around using that. So this isn't actually a tripod. It's a you know a handheld. It's a selfie stick, but mm -hmm. but this is spring loaded. And then you would just hook that, you know, you, that could screw onto it. Right, right. I have one that um, has a long snake and it clamps onto a phone yeah. or an iPad and I attach it to my easel when I want an iPad next to where I'm painting. Hold that. Are we, is that, any other questions? I'm out here. You got me. I'd like to know more about aperture and, and uh, shutter speed, but I'll learn that later, I guess. Do you have a just, can you take lens out of your camera? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, so you could get an additional lens. I have a whole bunch of Nikon lenses, mm -hmm. but my body is still a film. It's an old body, but I have like six Nikon lenses. My, my body's kind of old, too. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. You have a Nikon camera, brand new, and only two lenses. Yeah, I have telephoto lens, macro lens, 55 millimeter lens. Pretty quickly. Wide angle lens. Quickly uh, 
rejected the idea that the different brands make a difference in quality cameras? For, for, the, for what you're, for, for the level that you guys are, it just really probably doesn't matter. I mean, I guess I would stick with the top three of Canon, Nikon, Sony. But um, it doesn't. Any of those, any brand of camera is going to be better than the phone. I can spend whatever I want and it's endless. A competent camera, capable of. I have no idea. I know what I shoot with. I don't keep track of every new camera that comes out or old camera that comes out. So what do you shoot with? What is your? This is a Nikon D810. And it's actually an old camera. I mean, it's it's um, 2017, 2018. But it's a 36 megapixel full frame. So I make prints that are larger than four foot by eight foot. That's no problem that you can walk up to. Yes, we don't need to do that. No, you don't. Not unless you want to make 4 by 8 prints. <laughs> yes, my bowls do not deserve a 4 by 8 print. Okay. They are fine as they are. As as well, if you're doing a, a show sometime or another and you want to get people across the, the aisle right. and you want to hang up a large banner across the back of your booth, then maybe the big bowl would deserve like a 4 foot by 8 foot print. I never really thought about that, but yeah, that could, that could be kind of cool. I see a collage of, of see a collage of bowls and platters and stands and yeah. Anyways, never mind. If you get Photoshop, you'll spend a lot of time doing those types of things. I have Photoshop. All right. Yeah, I've looked at photographing paintings. I read online that I should should in fact uh, get a cloudy day. So I lay flat on the ground and shoot it from above. Does that work for you? Well, you know, it's hard to, does it work? I can sometimes produce a reasonable... And good sometimes good. you can't, but nothing's consistent. Right. So That's, that's the problem. If you get the right cloudy day at the right time, then you might be okay. Too many variables. I, I, might be I, I don't like variables. Like I like cleaning the, lady holding the If I shoot something the, today, I need to shoot something shooting. Three, you know, six yeah, months so, from now, quick, quick. and it needs to match, <laughs> then you can't rely on a cloudy day. A cloudy day is kind of the, I don't know, the best case scenario of nothing. <laughs> it's better than bright sunny day, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. bright sunny day. I'm usually just looking for one photograph that I can use over and over again. I can see it. Yeah, I just, like, I like to be, like I said, I like to be able to predict. You know, I guess that's the difference between the the fine art trained photographer mm -hmm. and the commercial trained photographer is the fine art trained photographer is told to just get out and go willy nilly and see what you get and see what you can come up with. And the commercial photographer is learn how to do recreate what you've done over and over again. So that, and, and if you want to make variables from it, that's fine, but you know the variables you're making them yourself. You're not just blowing in the wind. And the distances on the light stand is important in terms of having that much space to work with? Mm. Um, the, the, the closer you can get them around this way and the, the farther you have them out, the farther the, the, the subject is away from it, the broader the light is, so therefore it's easier to, to get it even. Where if you bring it in close, then it's a whole lot harder to get it even because You've got this light going to here versus this light going to here. And so it's just, it's easier to, it's more forgiving. And my last question, now, I bought a bunch of fancy light bulbs for here, and they, they have a, a rating on them that isn't fine on a lot of light bulbs, but it's supposed to be especially reflect, especially good for reflecting color, and that sort of thing. It's like CPI or something like that, C letters. No, but they're LEDs. Now I have uh, LEDs in my gallery. 
and they are they're 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 basically the replacement of a of the old floodlights, the P ninety eights or P what, what whatever. And I found them at Sam's at the time, mm -hmm. and they are absolutely beautiful. But Sam's doesn't carry them anymore. But they, I mean, so for for it's Amazon. different. It's different for lights viewing art mm -hmm. than it is photographing art. Um, so the LEDs you know, that, that I have, like I said, I, I use them in the gallery, but I wouldn't use them to photograph art. Okay. It's just a different, a different light. Mm -hmm. And you can make an image, mm -hmm. but I've just found that the halogen lights are easier to work with, easy to color balance, and, and consistent. As long as they don't kill you, but they won't. Wear safety glasses. The glass on the front side. Is that a wrap?